When I'm all alone on my own by my lonesome And there ain't a single another soul around I wanna dig into my guitar Band a blues riff that hang Over everything When I'm by myself in the States I'm kissed down under Or wherever it is I'll live when it's evening you know I speed read the morning news And come up with my own little song Oh, so Two Ah, such beautiful music, man Courtney Barnett and Kurt Vile. Kurt Vile. I think Courtney is from uh, New Zealand Or maybe Australia And uh, Kurt Vile, he's a Philadelphia Philadelphia boy Love them. I love them when they team up. I'm not, I'm not a fan of their individual work, but I love their. I love their uh, when they come together. It's just like, it's just like uh, bread and butter. It's just, it's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chemistry between the two. So uh, as Courtney said, I'm going to speed read the morning news. <laughs> That's what we're doing today. Right? So speed speed read some stories. I, I, you know, some people don't like the. Uh, the whole LARP thing, getting stuck down the LARP hole. <laughs> but sometimes you have to look at it. Sometimes you have to, you have to evaluate, just like you have to evaluate fake news and, and, and criticize the mainstream media. You got to also criticize the, you know, the phony balonies that work their way into our mind stream on the internet. Right? And, and there's obvious, <clears throat> obvious ways that they prey on people, mostly economic, uh, <clears throat> economic preying on people that are economically strapped. So let's look at some of these stories today. You got the first one from uh, this is interesting. Um, actually, it's actually quite disgusting. <clears throat> Tufts, because this happened in my neighborhood. They tried to. There was a statue um, of of the two generals at, at a, in front of a church called the Church of the Generals down the block, and it was um, it was the two Confederate generals, uh, Stonewall Jackson and uh, Lee, uh, General Lee. Right? They had this monument over there, and they hacked it down because because the the you know the uh, justice warriors came along and said, oh no no that's racist, chopping down history. <clears throat> so here we go again at Tufts, right? Tufts to remove more mural with only white people, quote to attract the diverse of diversity of people. <laughs> so you walk into Tufts, I guess, right? And here's the here's the mural, right? It's only whites, right? White, white, white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, maybe fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, about twenty whites. Where's the blacks? Uh, that's what the blacks say. Blacks say no black, I'm out. Um so but what about the history of the school? Let's find out. Is it was do blacks invent the school? Did blacks contribute early on? I don't know. Tufts University states stated in a news release that the alumni lounge mural, which depicts the Great names, the great names of men. Um, I see a few women in there who inform the school's history does not include a single image of a colored person, person of color. For example, despite the fact that black students were enrolled at Tufts as early as the late 19th century. Okay, all right, there was a few blacks and they eliminated the blacks from that. But maybe these are, you know, people that gave a lot of money or something they had prestige or maybe it was it was back then there was actually a system of merit where we don't know right but nonetheless the the, the justice warriors students have told us that they don't want to receive awards in the alumni lounge because quote they feel excluded and that's important to hear <laughs> we want to attract the diversity of people you want to change history is what you want to do you want to wipe out you want to wipe out the the history however despicable or however uh, degrading it was to your, your feelings, how it hurts your feelings, how this country was, was uh, uh, established, that's really what you want to, you need to eradicate, not the actual image of a history of a school. If you don't like it, go to the black school down the corner. Go to Howard University with all blacks. You don't hear white people standing in there say, where's all the white, where's the whites? Because where's the whites? I don't see any whites on the wall. That same thing, right? Don't go to a school if you don't like it. Right? So, so, so that's all. It's just a stupid story, right? So fucking, you know, grow up. Right? 
So how's the income and wealth inequality in our country doing, right? Here's a, here's a good one. France is, this is, this goes out to the yellow vest, man. Guys, you guys are, you're not winning. You're not winning, right? Or maybe you are winning, but they're, they're winning more. That's why they're not paying attention to you because they're giving you, the, they're giving you this, right? Listen to this. France's richest people have seen their net worth rocket 35% this year. <laughs> while, the, while the yellow, and I'm not laughing at you. I'm, I'm laughing, I'm laughing with you. I mean, Conti suggested that you guys try a run on the banks, you know, all out boycott. Nothing seems you guys are too, too peace and loving, you know, French, you know, uh, and, and you're not, you're not getting it done, right? Rather than go out and hold hands and eat sandwiches out in the park with yellow vests on, right? And, and walk till you, till you drop. Maybe try some, some, something more calculated at this point. I'll still cover it. I think it's a great movement. You guys are onto it. It's just you got to up the ante now. Right? So despite civil unrest in France to, to start the year, the country's richest citizens still had a fantastic start in 2019. Amidst protests, yellow vest protests, taking to the streets to demand higher wages and better positions, pensions, the 14 people from France on the Bloomberg Billionaire Index added a combined $78 billion to their collective net worth since the beginning of 2019. <laughs> Fucking crazy, man. So Yellow Vests are now in their seventh or eighth month. And in that time, the billionaires made $78 billion more in their net worth, right? The figures will likely serve as an additional fuel to protests over income inequality in the country. Oh yeah, it really. Where is the where is it fueling anything? Uh, so here's you know some kind of France's France France's peace was more than double Chinese China's richest. Right, so there it is, right? It's income and wealth inequality off the cuff in France. Their efforts are going backwards. Right? They're 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 it's just not it's not working. Right? So how do you break it down? you got to stop. It's the banking cartel. Right? I've been saying it all along. Right? So what else we got here? <clears throat> oh, is it happening? What about America? Right? What, about, what about the... Uh... Somebody asked me about the water. Why am I drinking um, Perrier and not Pellegrino? Pellegrino, right? By the way, I'll just do a little water talk. Pellegrino is the... Whenever you watch The Sopranos, right? You know Sopranos? Hey, fucking Soprano. I love The Sopranos. Uh, Sopranos, watch The Sopranos and look on the table and look at the table water. Right? Right? They don't drink out of the bottle like I do. They drink out of a little water glass right? with the pinky up like this. They drink. But they're drinking Pellegrino, a little, no ice. Usually, mostly, most of the time, room temperature. I like it cold. Right? No ice in a, in a small water glass, and they drink like this. Right? In between the espresso, they drink, like, they drink the... the, the um... <laughs> so why do I drink... Uh, Perrier is good, right? I, but I buy what's on sale because right? I'm, I'm poor, right? So I buy... Uh, and sometimes I refill the bottle with, with tap water. Sometimes I do that. But this is a, this is a fresh bottle. Watch. Uh, bubbly, a hint of lime. It's fucking delicious, man. Love it. So it's just good. I think uh, this is from France and the, the Pellegrino. Listen, Pellegrino and Perrier, if you, guys want, if you guys want to sponsor my show, I'd be happy to do that for you, right? You know, this is a free ride right now. But if you want to, I'd be happy to do a Pellegrino and... and um, and uh, Perrier and or Perrier, peace on my show. So, um, oh yeah, Perrier's from France and uh, Pellegrino's from Italy. Para Italiano. Uh, so, La LA Mega Mansion set record for selling, selling for a hundred and twenty million dollars. Right? Uh, income and wealth inequality doesn't exist. Look at this fucking house, man. Look at this place. Look at this place. Right? It's bigger than the White House. Right? It has unbelievable. Right? It's it is the fourth sale of a hundred million dollars or more in LA. Now in LA there's there's Skid Row. People are living in the street. And and but but here the mansion is set on four point seven acres. That's the that's the downfall of drinking <laughs> bubbly water. You burp like crazy. Manor includes more than one acre of living space. A fucking acre of living space. It's probably a pool, a, a, a gym, a sauna, a movie theater, 
Come on, man. And people are living in the goddamn street. An acre. Do you, does one person need an acre of living space? It's, it's uh, 1,500 square feet larger than it is, larger than the White House. Unbelievable. So, so there you go, man. The rich are getting richer. No, no objection. No objection. No, no, no. We're making it. We're making America great again, right? Are are the um, so here's another one. America is America bringing back manufacturing jobs? Well, here here is one little glimmer of hope. There's one little glimmer of hope in this disastrous thing, and I I don't I don't fully agree with it, and I'll tell you why. Um, where is this other one? There's another one about uh, student loans. Where's the student loan shit? I had another story. I forgot I lost it. Anyway. All right, so, so HP, Dell, and Amazon <clears throat> joined manufacturing exodus, leave, uh, leaving China. All right. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find an... Uh, there was a, an interesting article, and I, I lost it. I don't know where it is. Um... Nah, I don't know where it is. Let's see, it was about uh, it was about student loan debt. Student loan debt uh, is getting worse, right? The kids, the kids in America are just still strapped for student loans. Uh, but let's let's look at this, right? So, HP, Dell, and Amazon join manufacturing exodus, leaving China. Is it down here? The the thing I was looking for. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for confusing. I just I was just looking for something. Though China wasn't the only Asian nation where manufacturing activity slumped last month, according to a slate of almost un- unilateral, unilateral disappointment released this week, the trend, the tend, <laughs> the tend, they pronounced it wrong. The trend over the past year is more increasingly clear. What does this say? It says that some of these companies uh, are Dell. Uh, uh, HP and Amazon are leaving China because of Trump's trade war. So you could say, oh boy, it's working, right? With, with squeeze, Trump is ooh, he's such a savvy businessman. He's squeezing China, causing the big corporations, the big box companies and Amazon to exodus China to go where? Where are they going to go? The trade war is President Trump's to win as more tech companies resolve to move at least some production outside of the mainland. <clears throat> outside where? To India? To uh, Vietnam? To, to where? Where are they moving? They're not moving back here. Right? So the point is, the other article that I was looking at is about people in this country where they used to ride the coattails of manufacturing jobs <clears throat> while they're in school, while they're at home, while they're in transition to a better uh, occupation. You go to college and maybe you do a manufacturing job. Maybe you work and, you know, you sew shoes or you, you schlep boxes or you work in a mail room. It's kind of manufacturing company. Maybe you're, maybe you're an iron worker or something, right? You did something, some kind of manufacturing job. Those jobs don't exist anymore. So instead what you have is you have, that's why 78% of the country is still living paycheck to paycheck. Right? And so these kids are not able to to come back and, and, and work their way out of debt, right? That's why you got to eliminate the student debt. Just get li- eliminated, make student colleges tuition free. That's the way to go, clearly. But, um, but some, of these, um, some of these kids, they're not going to get by. And a move like this really doesn't change anything because these companies, HP had already drawn up plans to move some 20 to 30 percent of production outside of China, and it is reportedly looking to build a new supply chain in Thailand and Taiwan. All right, so I didn't even read that down that part of the list. So already that they're, they're not. This is not. This is not winning. This is not winning. China is on fire. And you're not going to compete with slave labor. They got that shit, you know, they got slaves. We got slaves, but they got slaves way more than, than we do. And uh, here, here's one last story. China sees supersonic civil aircraft prototype launch in 2035. <laughs> That's if we're still here. That's if the bubble doesn't pop. That's if the, the, the uh, ozone doesn't cave in on us. Right? I was on a show yesterday, and I, talk, I was talking reminded of the um 
what Malcolm Galdwell calls the uh, tipping point. If you want to look that, you know, look that. It's a it's an interesting read. He's kind of a socialite uh, New Yorker, and he he talks about he created the term or we'll coined the term tipping point, where we hit a rather than the whole thing we suck all the oil out of the ground, we have no more oil and no more energy. What happens is we we slowly erode the envi- the the the, uh, the atmosphere until it until there's a a pop. Right, and it, then there's, it's a point of no return, right? And then it, it, you know, the the globe could, uh, the Earth could heat up re- rapidly and kill off life forms and stuff, or kill us all and then enter into an ice age. Right? Now, is that possible? I know it's it's, it's just a hoax. Right? So China, China sees supersonic civil aircraft prototype. If we make it to to twenty thirty five, I just rewrote their uh, headline. China is looking to develop a green supersonic. A green supersonic. Is there batteries in that thing? I wonder. Uh, civil, uh, civil aircraft and an independent development prototype is expected. Now, didn't we already have the Concorde? Do you remember the Concorde, the French plane, right, with the nose that went like this, right? It fucking flies like this. <laughs> Remember that shit? Oh God! What happened to that one? The the uh, the. Um, so if it's a green a green, does that mean there's batteries in there? Does it mean that? Because that would be cool. I know the I know that the technology is uh is is getting there. Uh, so this thing flies half uh, twice the the speed of uh, sound. It's supersonic, meaning it, it has a sonic boom. So you can hear that. <laughs> if you live by an airport, get ready, man, because this shit is loud, man. It fucking blows up. It's like an explosion in the air. It's like a. <laughs> right? Fucking. So. But is it a good idea? What is, what's the point of the story? <clears throat> Excuse me. I got to get used to my new water is that the supersonic aircraft can fly more than twice as fast as the speed of sound, uh, and it could get you there in, for, for example, you can get from, say, I don't know, a 20-hour flight to Singapore, or 18-hour flight to Singapore. From New York, you get there in nine hours. That's, that's pretty impressive. If you left at, if you left, well, you wouldn't necessarily land, uh, you'd land a whole day behind or a whole day uh, forward. But it is interesting because it does seem to be that China is en route to becoming the great economy and uh, replacing the American economy by, by or around this year, 2035. Now, is that a fantasy? Is that, I don't know, China's, as we recede, they're excelling. Right? That ch- their, their culture is thousands of years old. If you think slave labor is going to go away in China, you you got you know again you're crazy man crazy shit right so a couple of stories for you there a couple of stories for you Marcus Conti reporting come to Patreon while we're on the you know the topic of um, poverty in America excuse me poverty in America you know become a Patreon of this channel for two dollars you keep the I keep you informed right an informed an informed mind is so is so important right because what else do you have you know if you if you allow if you come here and you watch this show for free, eventually the show's not going to be here, right? And you're going you're gonna to starve Conti out. I know there's a couple of people watching that want to see that. But for the vast majority, for the, for the thousands of people in my, in my audience, if everybody could just give a dollar, uh, become a Patreon for a dollar, and, and prove that this is a real movement and not just a floozy, some floozy long-haired guy with beautiful, beautiful, real, real hair. You guys are saying that my hair is not real. Real hair. I'll do a whole video on real hair if you want. Just, you know, if you think, if you think my hair is fake, if you think, if you think my teeth are capped, right, fucking I'll do a whole video on this shit, man. I don't care. Right? If that's what you need to do, you want to, you know, you guys, are, you guys you still got the, the, you know, fat gay LARPer calling me a homo, right? So fucking come on. I'll show you my, I'll show you my ass. You want to see? I'm not going to do that. But anyway, so so um, so anyway, become a Patreon. I'm, I'm serious. This ser- very <clears throat> very serious note. Become a Patreon of this channel, because it it really does make a difference. It makes it makes it it's make or break for a goddamn dollar, uh, 
for a goddamn dollar. Right? Marcus Conte reporting. 